Hey, Benny. Penelope? I'm sorry, is this not a good time for you? We're supposed to be starting our show. Paige, that is precisely why I'm reading the book Reaching for the Moon. Oh yeah, that's Katherine Johnson's autobiography. She's the NASA mathematician that helped send the first US astronauts into space. That's the perfect way to kick off our very spacey show. I'm sorry, what? On this show, we talk space travel, test your astronomy knowledge, and we learn what it takes to work on a film set. So lights, action, camera. You mean lights, camera, action. Potato, potato. Tomato, tomato. What? Nothing. But it's time for History Hoedown. Penny, what do you think it would feel like to be strapped to a rocket and lifted out of our atmosphere? What's going on over there? Oh, I thought we could do more of a puppet show for History Hoedown. A puppet show? Yeah, just keep going and pretend like I'm not here. Okay. The ride out of Earth's atmosphere is incredibly bumpy, but then suddenly the rumbling stops and you're weightless. Space! Why did you just say space? I couldn't think of a sound effect that would represent the vacuum of space, so I just said space, which I think pretty much delivers the goods. Penny, I think the format of the show is fine just the way it is. Do you mind if we do it the regular way? Sure, I mean, if that's what you think. Thank you. If you think that's what the people want. Yes, I do. Then by all means, please proceed. Ever since Macy Jemison was a little girl, she knew she loved science and wanted to travel to space. There had been very few women who had gone to space and this irritated May. If May could pull off her dream of space travel, she'd be the first black woman in space. I'm getting goosebumps. I know. May was exceptionally talented and driven from the very beginning. In addition to her love of science, she had a passion for dance. May studied ballet from an early age and learned African-Japanese jazz in modern forms of dance. May was on an educational fast track and entered Stanford University when she was only 16. She was one of just a few African-Americans in her class and experienced discrimination from her teachers, but nothing could stop her. She graduated from Stanford with two degrees, one in chemical engineering and the other in African and African-American studies. So what'd she do next? She became an astronaut. Not yet. She went to Cornell Medical School and became a medical doctor. She served in the Peace Corps and was responsible for the health of volunteers in Liberia and Sierra Leone. She had never let go of her dream of becoming an astronaut. And in 1987, she applied to NASA's astronaut program. And out of roughly 2,000 applicants, she, along with 14 others, were selected to join the space program. May launched into space on September 12, 1992. She conducted various experiments in space, like whether frogs can reproduce in zero gravity. They can. May once said, never limit yourself because of others' limited imagination. Dr. Macy Jemison, you are a true inspiration. Fun fact, Macy Jemison is more inspiring than Neil Armstrong. Macy Jemison is more inspiring than Neil Armstrong, the first person to walk on the moon? That is correct. That's not a fact, that's just your opinion. Let me rephrase. True or false, Macy Jemison is better than Neil Armstrong. False. This is still not a fact and only your opinion. Incorrect. The answer is true. Here's a real fun fact. Macy Jemison was the first real astronaut to appear on the TV show Star Trek. Now it's time for Lie Detector. Here's how it works. We're going to tell you three facts and one lie, and you have to guess which one's the lie. I am the lie detective. Oh, jolly good, Dr. Helms. I'll be our trusted assistant, Dr. John H. Watson. What? I thought since you were a detective, you could be Sherlock Holmes and I could be Dr. Watson and we could crack the case together, old boy. Yeah, but I'm a detective in your just page. Well, I didn't prepare a costume. Clearly. All right, here we go. Number one, one day on Venus, 
is longer than one year on Earth. Number two, 1,000 Earths could fit into the sun, which is considered an average sized star. Number three, footprints from astronauts who have been to the moon will likely be there for 100 million years. Number four, more energy from the sun hits the Earth every hour than the planet uses in one year. Okay, detective, which one's the lie? Well, I might need help from my trusty assistant, Dr. Watson. Oh, jolly good, Mr. Helms. The lie is number two. The sun is so big and can fit one million Fs inside of it, not 1,000. Let's chat. Penny, have you heard of an AC? Yes, Paige, you were speaking of an air conditioner. Nope. An area code? Athletic club? No, Penny. Apple computer? Assistant coach? Air cargo? Atmospheric chemistry? What? Apple cider? Penny. Acoustic coupler? How do you even know what that Alterating is? Alterating current? Penny, stop. Sorry, I have a problem with acronyms. Once I start, I can't stop. Good to know. The AC I'm speaking of is an assistant camera person because we get to talk to AC Sydney Cox and learn about what she does on a film set. Hi, Sydney. Thanks for talking with us. Hi, Paige and Penny. Thanks for having me. So what does an assistant camera person do? A camera assistant is one of the many technicians on a film set. They basically run the camera all day. They're in charge of making the camera work so that the creative people can do what they want to do. What makes an AC great at their job? A good AC knows their equipment inside and out. It's important, especially in prep, to run through all of your equipment, make sure it all works, make sure you know exactly how to use all of it and how to troubleshoot any problems that might come up. A good AC is also really good at listening. It's important to hear what's going on around you. It's important to have the camera in the right place, in the right configuration, with the right gear, ready to go, so that all the other people on set can see the frame and do their job correctly. So what do you love about being an AC? I love being an AC because I love being a part of a crew. It's a very challenging job, but it's also very rewarding. It's different every day. Sometimes I'm at the top of a mountain. Uh, sometimes I'm in a penthouse suite hotel in downtown San Francisco. So I never really get bored of it. The equipment is always different. The people are always different. It's very challenging, but at the end of a great day, I feel better than I ever could sitting in a desk all day. So what do I have to do if I want to work on a film crew someday? There are a lot of different ways to get into film. I went to college and I was able to meet the people that I needed to meet to get me on a film set. But there are a lot of other ways. I'd say the most important thing is just to get yourself on set somewhere. It's not really something that you can learn in a classroom. It's something that you have to learn being on set and watching others who have been doing it for a long time. It's very easy to be intimidated on a film set, especially for women. Uh, most of the faces that you'll see around you are men. Most of the people in technician positions are men. We've been seeing lately more women and more people of color in technician positions on film sets, which makes the film industry so much better. It's important to get on a film set and show that you are there, ready to work and ready to learn. And if you have a good attitude, you won't have a problem. Thank you, Sydney, for talking with us. Thanks for having me, Paige and Penny. It's been a real pleasure. Now it's time for a Paige and Penny's absolutely positively super awesome favorite things and recommendations. We have to shorten that title. Do we? Is the Great Wall of China too long? Is Leo Tolstoy's classic book War and Peace too long? Anything else? No. Okay, our first... Our school bus is too long? I mean, where are we going to put all the kids? I'm done. Our first recommendation is the NASA YouTube channel, where you can find the rocket launch that took place on May 30th, 2020, which was the first time NASA astronauts have launched into Earth's orbit in a commercially built spacecraft made by the company SpaceX. Next is the SpaceX website, where you can find lots of videos and photos of SpaceX rockets. Our final pick is TED Ed. Ted Ed's YouTube channel uses animation to answer questions like, why can't we see evidence of alien life? And how folding paper can get you to the moon? In the words of Dr. Macy Jemison, science provides an understanding of a universal experience. Art provides a universal understanding of a personal experience. I see what she did there. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment. Bye. Bye.